Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. At the onset, I like to thank Bansi and team for inviting me for this lecture. And as rightly been pointed out, we have to start in in the morning, but we are starting in the afternoon. So, so a, a, and it's actually a right time to discuss about the concept of GIP and GLP in the afternoon because we are proceeding toward having our lunch. So, I am going to discuss about the concept of GIP, a forgotten incretin hormone over next 15-20 minutes to you. We, we learn only what has been taught to us until and unless something has been taught which is already there in the pipeline. Now, if we see whenever we eat anything, when we go for the lunch, there is a release of a group of hormones from intestine which collectively are known as incretin hormones. And they are responsible for secretion of glucose dependent insulin secretion from pancreas apart from other properties. There are two important hormones which are secreted from the intestine in response to nutrient load. One is GIP which is a glucose dependent insulinotropic peptide. Another is GLP-1 which is glucagon-like peptide 1. Now the topic is GIP a forgotten entity. Why it is forgotten? Now if for that we have to understand the history. If you see for first time in 1930 actually somebody identified that there is a substance which is, se which is secreted from the intestine and when it is injected into the animal model, it will result in lowering of glucose. At that time, nobody knows about GIP, GLP and incretin. And then over many, many years and decades, scientists identified both GLP and GIP. Now it is in 1970, for the first time, GIP was first identified. And later on 1984, it is GLP which was identified, but unfortunately GIP was forgotten. Why it was forgotten? Because in type 2 diabetes, GIP levels are normal and GLP levels are reduced. So a concept came up that individual with type 2 diabetes are having GIP resistance and they are having reduced level of GLP. So the scientists tried to focus on the issue of developing GLP-1 analogs so that GLP-1 levels can be restored and diabetes can be controlled. But this was the initial thinking based on which the science progressed. Now what is incretin effect? Now as I have told you, whenever we eat something, there is secretion of intestinal hormones which are incretin, which goes into the plasma, act on the pancreatic beta cell, result in secretion of insulin. Now when you give to a same individual, same amount of intravenous glucose and oral glucose which result in similar rise in plasma glucose, the insulin response is different. As you see the area under the curve, the lower curve is when you give intravenous glucose, the topmost is when you give the oral glucose. So the area under the curve, the difference between oral and injectable is known as incretin effect. This is the max increase in insulin secretion in response to the gut hormone when we eat something. The pointer is or yes, Right. Now, when we see patients of type 2 diabetes, these are normal people, and here are type 2 diabetes individuals. In type 2 diabetes, there is incretin defect. As I have told you, GIP, people are not responding, levels are preserved, and GLP levels are reduced which result in reduced secretion of insulin in response to the nutrient load. And now the GLP ones are developed for that. But then as the understanding goes on, basically GIP resistance is not absolute. If you bring down plasma glucose, GIP resistance can be reversed. So the concept which was initially that there is a GIP resistance, so there is no role of using GIP has now changed with the availability of newer class of agents which are now available in the in the US world going to come to our country in next few years or month. 
Now, if we see GLP-1, I think I have already told you the story. What are the actions of GLP-1? I know all of you are knowing. It's just a repetition that when you, when you take or when your GLP-1 is secreted inside your body, it acts on the pancreas where it causes glucose-dependent insulin secretion. Also, it suppresses glucagon secretion. Now, the suppression of glucagon is uniform. GLP-1 in whatever dose we are using, whatever is your plasma glucose level, GLP-1 only suppresses plasma gluc glucagon. It delays gastric emptying, it acts on the central nervous system and decreases your food intake. These are some of the properties based on which G various GLP receptor agonist has been developed. From there, as I have told you, now we, are, we have started discussing about GIP, although it was discovered first in 1970, but now we are discussing about GIP because a drug has been developed based on GIP backbone where GLP receptor agonist is inserted into it. So the, so the molecule has both actions of GIP as well as GLP-1. Now if we look at the actions of GIP, and compare it with GLP, there are some differences and some similarities. What are the similarities? GIP also act on pancreatic beta cell to cause glucose dependent insulin secretion. But in contrast to GLP-1, GIP stimulate glucagon secretion. Now some of you will be confused that over last 15 years, repeatedly it has been taught that glucagon level should be suppressed. Now we are using a drug which is causing increase in glucagon secretion. The, the, the answer is the, the effect of GIP on glucagon is bidirectional. What do we mean by bidirectional? That only when your glucose, glucose level is going down, it is less than 70 milligram per deciliter, only then GIP will stimulate glucagon. If your plasma glucose levels are normal, GIP is not going to change your glucagon level. And even when you are using DPP-4 inhibitors, where we have taught the concept that in hypoglycemia, glucagon level will be high, it is actually GIP, native GIP which is present in the body, which is actually causing increase in glucagon secretion. With increase in GLP, or when you use DPP-4, when you restore normal GLP, GLP does not cause an increase in glucagon secretion in even in presence of hypoglycemia. So even with when we were using DPP-4 inhibitor, it is GIP which is responsible for prevention against hypoglycemia. Apart from that action on pancreatic alpha and beta cell, if you see the other actions of GIP, adipose tissue is a primary organ where GIP is acting. And adipose tissue is now recognized as the biggest endocrine organ of human body, which is dysfunctional, as I am going to discuss with you, in patients of type 2 diabetes. There is dysfunctional fat partition in patients of type 2 diabetes. So if a drug is there, which is going to change this dysfunctional fat partition into functional fat or good fat partition, probably it is going to be advantageous. So Apart, if you see effect on brain, there are some studies, especially from rat models, where it has been shown that GIP is also associated with a decrease in food intake, increase in energy expenditure, but these are not from human studies. So friends, if you see, if somebody is taking a nutrient load, and if you see the effect of IV glucose and oral glucose, I have told you, but then if you do the same experiment by giving GIP alone, GLP-1 alone, combination of GIP and GLP. So this green diamond is combination of GLP and GIP. Yellow is with GLP alone, which we are using as of now in routine clinical practice. This is GIP and IV glucose, which means the action of GLP and GIP is complementary. When they are acting together, it result in brisk insulin response as compared to use of either of these GIP hormones alone. So as you see in this cartoon, in response to the nutrient load, glucose level rises and glucose acts through GLUT2 receptor. 
where it goes inside glucose is metabolized to glucose 6 phosphate and then through opening of potassium channel calcium entry in, takes place and insulin is secreted but at the same time there are glp and gip receptors which are present over pancreatic beta cell which are cyclic amp dependent through increase in cyclic amp protein kinase pathway it augments release of insulin secretion in response to your nutrient load now this augmentation is actually the majority two third response of insulin secretion in response to the load as compared to glucose so if i show you the absolute contribution of glucose glp gip towards insulin secretion whenever you eat something glucose per se is responsible for 33 percent secretion of the insulin if you see glp1 it is responsible for another 22 percent secretion of the insulin if you see gip it is responsible for 44 percent secretion of the insulin which means if you now combine glp and gip they are responsible for 70 percent of insulin secretion in response to the nutrient load what we are taking so therefore incretin hormones are critical in maintaining euglycemia in health we already know the concept of glp1 but because of our understanding in the past which has now changed gip is equally important in maintaining euglycemia and not only euglycemia as i am going to discuss with you even in maintaining fat where it should remain in our body now let's understand more about gip what are the places where gip receptors are distributed in the body this is a list of list of various organs in a human body where glp1 receptors are identified in rat models or in human beings but there are two important locations where, where they are in human beings they are identified islet of langerhans alpha cells and beta cells adipose tissue subcutaneous and visceral there are some presence in the brain as i have told you but majority of studies are done in rat models now let's see what they do when we know the receptors i already told you the alpha story that these hormones are actually in health synergistically acting on alpha cells maintaining a physiological level of glucagon so therefore whenever somebody is now telling you that gip results in increase in glucagon secretion do not jump into the conclusion that this glucagon secretion is going to be harmful because five years down the line we are going to have triple agonist gip glp and glucagon agonist so glucagon is also required for normal health normal well-being it serves some number of good functions now coming to adipose tissue i have told you it is the biggest endocrine organ there are presence of gip receptors over adipose tissues now in type 2 diabetes there is impaired nutrient partitioning what do we mean by impaired nutrient partitioning normally in health the fat should remain in subcutaneous adipose tissue liver pancreas or the other visceral organs are not the place where ideally fat should be but when your capacity of subcutaneous tissue is overwhelmed in presence of obesity or because of defective intracellular signaling this fat is going to be deposited at number of ectopic places now this is there in presence of obesity in patients of type 2 diabetes now can we do something something to to take care of this ectopic fat accumulation uh, and we know the concept of now diabetes remission and reversal where if you remove ectopic fat from liver or from the pancreas there is remission or reversal of diabetes so can we do something for that uh, here probably gip has to play a bigger role if we see in healthy individual gip increases adipose tissue blood flow now by increasing adipose tissue blood flow it results in better utilization of fat gip also causes activation of lipoprotein lipase lipoprotein lipase is an enzyme which is required to keep fat into subcutaneous adipose tissue on the other hand there is an enzyme which is hormone sensitive lipase 
if it get activated, there will be release of free fatty acid from subcutaneous adipose tissue and it will be deposited in ectopic locations. So with GIP, there is an inc increase in blood flow, there is an activation of lipoprotein lipase and as you see the effect of GIP, there is increased fat utilization, increased oxidation of fat. There is decreased release of free fatty acid into the circulation. There is increased glucose utilization into adipose tissue and there is increased free fatty acid esterification. So all these are beneficial effects which changes the impaired partition or the defective partition of fat into good partition. So this is in very brief, I am trying to tell you the GIP which was discovered way back before GLP-1 because of understanding at that point of time it was believed that GIP is not going to be useful but now as you learned in second part of the symposium, GIP we know when in, is an important in creatine hormone present in the body, specifically when we look its effects on adipose tissue where it utilizes better lipid uptake, storage capacity. At pancreatic beta cell, it is more powerful than GLP for insulin secretion and together they act synergistically and they are responsible for causing 70% of the insulin secretion. So I would like to stop here, will not go further and, and my co-speaker will tell you further about the this concept.